Okay, there we go. We should be set up. So, hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Sue and I'm from OML Embroidery. And today we're going to do something a little bit different and we're going to do some digitizing. Not a whole lot, but you guys will love it. All right, I'm just getting the chat up here, but cooking dinner. There we go. Music, Jackie Cheek. Hi, Jackie. Um, Rose, hello, hello. Let's see who else. Um, 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 Shannon. Shannon's been here for a little while, I think. So you guys can hear me okay? Everything's good? You can hear me? Just someone let me know, and then I can feel comfy in starting. Cindy West, hello. Hello, Sue. Yes, so you can hear me. Yay. Awesome. Hello, hello. Karen. Hi, Karen. Anne. Hello. Stephanie. I don't know if that's how you say it, but that's what it looks like. Hello, Lisa. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. You're talking about Gordon Lightfoot. That's interesting. That's interesting. There you go. Karen, Amy, sounds good, all right. Ronog, hi Ronog. Jesse, hi Sue, hear you, hear you fine. Are you guys ready to do a little bit of digitizing? Because this is really fun. Gail, hi Gail. And Gia, hi from Troy, Michigan. Ooh, there's a bug. Um, Let's see, Carol. Hi, Carol, loud and clear. And another Carol, hear you, yay, yay. So, okay, we ready to get started? Susan Williams, hello. Lynn, our Lynn is in the house, all right, all right. So I just thought, seeing how it is Mug Rug Monday, I thought we could do mug rugs. So I'm going to show you guys how to make a simple mug rug, which is right here in the middle of the screen. So first thing we're going to do is delete everything. So the kind that we're making today is the satin stitch finish. That's what we want to do. It's the easiest one. And once you make a template, then you can add whatever you want to it. So, Cindy King, I have a phone meeting here, so if I disappear, hi, OML gang. Pama, oh yeah. Um, let's see. Hello again, Sue and the gang. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Keep the chats coming. Now, before we get started, actually, I just remembered. If everyone can hit the like button, that would be wonderful. The numbers um, on... Uh, YouTube have gone right down. So if you could share this either on a board of Pinterest or on your Facebook, that would be like your personal page, that would be great. So if you could do two, that would be great. If you could do one, that would be great. Make sure you give it a like. All right, we got to kick up the numbers. I'm kind of suffering a little bit here. So Jesse says, did awesome. You never know who could be watching and we need to get more people watching. Okay, so back to this. So the first thing you have to decide is what you want to make. Okay, so we're just making a template. So we're going to keep it simple. Evelyn Moore, hope you're doing fine. I am. I'm managing. It's all good. Shannon, thanks for sharing. I see when you share and I appreciate it. So simple, simple. This is how we're going to start off. Now I am working in Dimes software. I know everybody doesn't have it. However, we're going to be using basic tools. So we're going to be using the running stitch. We may or may not use a uh, motif stitch and a satin stitch. Now, every single embroidery software will have those things. So you just have to look for them. 
and then you can do this in any software so i'm really keeping it simple don't just look and say it's you know dime software i can't do it you can do this in any software i promise you so if you're brand new to it you can still do this lynn oh i don't think i bought i got lynn and brilliant so she could see what she's doing with her little mickey um machine uh but it's just basic she can't digitize on it so sorry i was gonna say do that okay so let's see shape i think we're gonna keep it simple so we're gonna do a circle so uh everyone should have a circle on whatever software you're using or you can make it with you know like four points or however many curves will make it so in this software and i think in brilliance yes pama pe design 11 anything it'll probably be actually um a little bit easier in pe pe design 11. so anything so write down uh running stitch motif stitch satin stitch and we're not gonna do um what level do we need to get for in brilliance make sure you use my my um link uh you have to have one of the stitch artists one or both i have it all um but yeah you have to have one of the stitch artist ones to be able to do it i don't think i think it's one or two or both i can't remember cindy west i have dime software trying to learn more about it there are a ton of videos on the channel using dime software like we're talking like a hundred of them so you can start at the beginning and learn so okay back to this i'm on my cintiq but i'm going to use my mouse now size what size hoop are you going to use are you going to make it for um a five by seven uh let's why don't we do that actually so i'm going to take off the maintain aspect ratio because you can see up here it's not a perfect circle and we want it so i'm going to make it 4.5 and these are um inches it says it right there and now we have a perfect circle so you don't even have to pay a whole lot of attention to your circle because you can fix it up you can do this in any software too you just got to find the size so this will be for lynn and this will fit in a five by seven so you can't go any bigger than five you could make it longer but then it's not a circle right so wendy hi sue hello i waved no one can see me wave what the heck okay so that's our first step and in brilliance and in this one we have to make it stitches so it started off as an outline and we have to make it stitches now the next thing we're going to do is over here or you could do it here too uh right click copy control c and paste so i'm going to do it control v so we have two three four five that's all we need to do so the first step is right here number one they're all nicely numbered i love it um the first step is the placement that's what we want to do the second step is going to be tack down i was waiting for you guys to say it but i can't hear you ah. so tack down and the next step is going to be fabric and the next step is going to be the uh, fabric underneath. Uh, good question, Cindy, hold on. And the last one is gonna be the satin stitches. So what does maintain aspect ratio mean? Okay, that is a very good question. So it was right here. So if I were to make this bigger, I don't have it selected, so it's not gonna keep it um if i were gonna do it bigger look it would just deform like that if you click on the aspect ratio it's gonna keep everything the same i gotta do it on the diagonal it's gonna keep everything the same see how it's a a perfect 
circle when I pull it out like that that's what it means and it keeps them almost exactly perfect so if you want you know an oval you have to take the maintain aspect ratio off so then you could make it a circle but longer on one side hopefully that makes sense um, it's a handy thing to use so it's awesome so again this is the first one so uh, there's no rhyme or reason to the colors that you use um, I tend to use just whatever's here so the first one's blue and you can't leave all of these the same color because it'll just stitch out and you won't have any time so yeah so the next one is going to be the tack down now on, on this software you can change if you want so tack down you can change the lettering I think you can do that on brilliance too um, but isn't that handy we want to change the color too because we do want it to stop so if you feel like um, you know changing them because this is going to be the template and all you're going to have to do for this is just bring in whatever design you can't re resize the design plunk it on there you're good to go so okay tack down I'm just going to do it once for the tack down and this is going to be fabric this makes it nice and tidy so fabric it's okay being that color now this one actually I need one more so uh control c control v I don't have to do anything more than that because I haven't copied anything so this one the next thing that we're going to do so we've got our placement our batting and we can make a second copy of this if we want but we'll talk about that after and uh, then we've got our fabric right there and now I think I would like to do some motif stitches so how do you take it from this to something else okay first of all change the color and in this software you have to go to convert and we're going to put it to complex fill so in hatch I'm pretty sure you can just change it to a fill in PE design 11 it's a drop down that you can do and it does it all you can pick motif um, and then brilliance I think is very similar to this I don't want tatami fill because that would be uh, as we Canadians say hockey puck we don't want that so I'm gonna click up here and you want to do a motif right here so there's tons in pep software to pick from and I love motifs and I could probably play with them forever so let's see this one click apply or hit enter that is gorgeous you want to make it bigger play around with the size there's nothing wrong with that and get it how you want so there's no specific number there's nothing that you you know have to do just get it you know how you like looking at it so I could go do another one this one looks good I prefer like bigger 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 I think it's more fun that way look at how uh, fancy that is isn't that cool don't you think that would be fantastic and we're talking to Rachel from Scotland awesome I'm actually my family goes way back to Scotland which is cool thanks for tuning in we appreciate that that's very cool so look at isn't this one cool now on this software too because I have everything I have it's called advanced stippling so there's a whole bunch more but these ones are a little bit fancy I'll try to hurry up I could really spend all day playing with this but we'll see oh that one will be nice I am gonna make it bigger though so again no magic number guys just it sets itself up it'll look pretty I actually really like that one so I'm gonna leave that and we have the proper color change here if you want to look at it better you can 
use this little plus sign here, complex. It's still called a complex fill, but we know exactly what it is. And I'm not worried about colors right now. So then our next one is going to be where we put the back fabric on. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the back fabric. So we're going to take the hoop off the machine and we're going to turn it over and we're going to put our back fabric on and make sure it covers all the lines and everything. And we're going to put it face up. So it's basically two-sided, right? Okay. And what I like to do for this one is make it like a super bright color, like red. It only needs to be a single stitch. It really, really isn't gonna go anywhere. And then we have our last one, believe it or not. So let's go over it one more time. We're using running stitch, motif stitch, and I really love this one. And we're going to do the uh, placement and then we're going to do the tack down. You can see I labeled it handy for a template. Um, put your fabric down and then trim it. And then we do our beautiful motif stitch. No magic numbers. Do whatever you want. Whatever looks good. Like I made this one. I just guessed at the numbers. I swear. I just got it so I like how it looks. We could add a design. Yes, you can. And I'll go over that in a moment. I love it when you digitize, Sue. Yeah, I should do more of it. I just find the videos are not as successful. So, and I need the views to keep this going, you know, all that kind of stuff. But yes, Carol, you can add a design and you're going to add a design over the stitches uh, but before you put the back on because we don't want it to show through we'll do that in a minute so our last one I have it selected now we do want to in this software we're gonna convert it to um, a steel stitch style stitch whatever in hatch I think you can just click on satin stitch um, let's see, PE design. I think it's a drop down menu to do it that way. And in brilliance, I think you can, if you have, I have all of them, but there's one you can click on instead of run, you just click it. You don't have to convert anything. So we need to have a thicker width because we need those forgiving satin stitches that uh, Lynn always loves. So this one here is in millimeters. So we're gonna make it five, 5.0, and see it got a little bit thicker. Next thing, it's looking good, isn't it? Next thing we wanna do is make sure that we have those wonderful zigzag stitches. Now I do have it on full mode if you were to zoom in so you can see the zigzag stitches perfect perfect so we've got everything and it's um six steps that's all you need so you could save this make a template folder um and you can put templates in here now if you didn't like this you could just simply change the motif or you can change the background stitching and save as. That's all you have to do on it, which I think is awesome. So you can use it uh, quite a bit. Navigator, I can't remember where this is. There we go. So I'm down here and I wanna pick up a design and, oh, I love this. Oh my, I should look at this more. So I'm just going to import a design. This has uh, everything, you know, built in. So there we go. There's the design and it is grouped and I'm going to put it here. And I think that's adorable. Now, if you wanted to put something else or something bigger, you can always just, you know, play around with it. Let's see. Um, now this the the beauty 
of Dime Software. This is a C2S file. So that means that it is a working file, working file. So that means we can resize it and there's no design loss, there's nothing. If you have a stitch file, so PES, DST, everything like that, you cannot resize it. Now I do kind of see a problem right here. So I am going to ungroup it. Now again, this is the working file. And because this is satin stitches and I went ahead and made it so much bigger, rose a worm. Yeah, perfect. That's perfect. I made it so much bigger. We've got all these lines here. Now, what does that mean? That means it's um, kind of stretched out a little bit. Oh, I really don't like the outline. If you're doing with satin stitches, you have to be careful. These ones are okay. I like the eye. I never thought of doing that for an eye. He's kind of simple, but cute. So I am not sure why it does it separately like that. That's kind of strange if you ask me. Let me go back to, yes, it is satin. All right, do, 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 talk amongst, amongst yourselves. So, okay, why do we have a run? All right, so this is a sign to me that it's not actually a uh, stitch, or uh, sorry, oh, maybe it is standard stitch length it's just weird how it's set up so what i'm going to do is just go back and go back and put it down to its other size and take off the 3d and it still does it so it's just it is what it is it's just kind of set up kind of weird that happens sometimes um you know it's okay so let's put this dude right in the middle. Now, if you were to stitch it out just like this, then it's all going to show through the back. So I still have it in a group and I just kind of went back to the original size. I'm just going to slip them over just a little bit. No matter what it says under there, it's going to be fine. So where do we want to place it? We want to place it after the motif stitches, but before we put the back on. What is wrong with it? I'm not really sure. I didn't design it, but it has um, like weird, it's weirdly separated. I'm, I'm certain it's going to stitch out properly, but just to play around with it, uh, I want to show you guys how to do it properly, right? So this is the parts that I'm not concerned, but it's just kind of weird. Now, yes, you can see the motif stitches through, uh, but that's okay. That's okay. And it's all grouped, so we're not going to worry about it. Just if it's a working file, then you can do whatever you want with it. Resize it. Just make sure you're careful with satin stitches because if they are too long, they will not stitch out. And that's the end of that. There's there's no rule breaking in that part. So back to the bird. So we want to put the bird. Now remember I made the backing stitches in red. And I did that so I could pick it out quite easily. So let's close this group. And I like to do this manually but there's other ways of doing it uh let's see did i do it right no it I, I didn't do anything yeah this software doesn't like it so i am going to go backwards and uh do that again let's do that again backwards and you do have to make sure it's in the correct spot or your mug rug is going to look terrible so we're going to go backwards, backwards. So what I usually do before I'm finished everything is that I look first. And you see, I have made a mistake. I have made a mistake. I moved one instead of the other. 
So it's always good to review it because uh, sometimes, you know, mistakes happen. So I'm just moving this back. I find this slightly tedious, but that's okay. So now that looks better. Thank you. It's perfect. I'm going to show you another thing you can do with the motif stitches in a minute. So we've got placement. We've got tack down for the batting. We have fabric. Place the fabric on top and then we're going to cut it. That's fine. Now we have our stitches, our motif stitches, and then it's going to stitch out the bird and then to cover up the back and make it look better, of course, is putting on the back fabric. So six copies of it. And then our wonderful satin stitches with a zigzag. So you can change colors. You can play around with colors. I think in the other ones, we always did purple and uh, blue because I think that's nice. So you don't have to have motif stitches. So this is, uh, you know, the bird. I like the bird. I think he's cool. The bird is the word, as they say. Um, but let's check just a regular motif and uh let's see apply see now that's perfect that is perfect but even better look do dimensional and then it gives it some character i like it i like it so in hatch it's 3d mm, i can't remember with in brilliance offhand Mm, oh yeah, I forgot about Embird. Um, Sharon says I had Embird when I started years ago, then I switched to Hatch. I have all of them. I'm a little bit shy of using Hatch or making, you know, videos with Hatch for certain reasons, but I use E4 because I have it and it's a very expensive program. And actually now I have uh, two copies of it. Not that that's what I wanted, but I have two copies of it so I don't have to carry the dongle around. I'm terrified of losing it. Hatch, all you need is internet once. The other ones, you don't even need it at all. Now PE Design came with one of my machines, so I don't have to worry about that. Ember, um, I've always had, so it was just a matter of keeping it upgraded. Um, I love the PEP software for sure. I love it. It is so creative and there's so many built-in things in it. What am I forgetting? In Brilliance, because I have a MacBook Pro that I like to use and In Brilliance runs perfectly on it. So look, just by making one little change and because it's a template, that you can change whatever you want, whenever you want. You can make the background quilting suit whatever you're doing. And that makes it easy. And then you don't, oops, you don't save it. And then your template will be exactly the same. Now, I like this one, but I'm gonna make it bigger. No magic number, just make it bigger. And see, that looks really cute too. And yes, I think a little worm, early bird gets the worm sort of thing. So, okay, do you guys have any questions? We made a circle, we counted out all the steps, we just made quick copies, control C, control V, and we picked a motif, and we put the background, and we made it, uh, sorry, to put the bottom fabric on, and then we did the satin stitches. So that is easy. That is easy to do. Then I brought in a bird, cause I think he's kind of cute and put it in the right position. And now all we have to do is stitch. So right there you have mug rugs right there. So another thing you can do, because uh, now I'm not gonna touch Mr. Bird here, we'll put him aside, 
but because this is a working file so I can work with it and adjust it it's not stitch files are made for stitching working files are made for editing so I can edit there you go look at that and this software is so good it even keeps the same width of the satin so let's see what size I made it so I made it six and a bit by six and a bit we can go even bigger um, I think control a works on everything except for I don't want birdie in there so I just do a bounding box that's easy so we can make this guy really big and it keeps the same everything so you don't have to change 7.51 that'll be absolutely perfect for your 8 by 8 hoop so you can do that with the working file you can even do that with your template just make sure you save it as a working file you can't well you can but it won't work if you have a stitch file and you save it as a working file it's still a stitch file it's not going to magically change right <laughs> so you could bring out your template say you wanted to make something bigger or just add um yes you can make work files in embrilliance absolutely absolutely you can every software will have the work working files so if you do the sew alongs with me on the weekends then for dime she gives you the working file so you can basically do whatever you want with it because it's not a stitch file so again working files are the ones that you work with so Susan if you have embrilliance one of the stitch artist levels I don't remember what they do I'm just you know I have to have the whole thing that's just how I am um, you will be doing basically the same thing except yours will be saved um, under template circle template mug rug dot be and the be is your working file and I remember on in brilliance when you go to the file and the save you can save the working file and a stitch file with one click and I find that just delightful so let's get rid of the bird so I made this a lot bigger a lot bigger and everything is still the same ooh how about some skulls Karina will like that and they are way bigger they're way too big okay okay that's way too big I think Ooh, look at that Battenberg lace mug rug that's what I was working with so I think the skulls are too big so sorry about that what is this right there is that turkey maybe huh <laughs> it's kind of funny I just want to find something really good football huh let's do this kitty cat maybe um, um, um oh he's beautiful I think he's too big uh, hopefully he is grouped so I'm gonna right click and do cut you can cut and you can paste whatever you want and let's control V paste and it's smaller than I thought but that's okay we could add different things to it let me check out the skulls and we're gonna cut and then we're gonna go back and we're gonna paste so control C control V I cut though but you know just make sure you don't save it or you'll be saving an empty design so the skulls weren't too big I'm gonna group the skulls um, they are gorgeous for sure let's go back to our list and we can see in the pictures all the parts that go to the kitty cat because I uh, didn't group it there we go oh he's beautiful he's a beautiful cat I could have made him bigger but you know I'm just kind of going there we go so 
that is almost done. And what do we have to do next? What do we have to do? We have to move it into the right spot. And I'll do it properly this time. So we want it after the motif stitches, but before, before the background fabric goes on. So that's just about perfect, isn't it? Those are some nice skulls, man. I think I have to make this orange or something though. Whoops, how about I click on it? So, okay, before we go, guys, do you have any questions? And can you guys do this? I can write down the steps or hopefully you guys wrote down the steps and just remember what they are. Anne says, I love the kitty cat. Yeah, I know, he was cute. I could have made him bigger. Let's see how this one goes for making it bigger because these are all working files. That actually looks better. Yep, see this one. This one worked fine. Look at that, the detail. I love the red eyes. So working files, make them bigger. Love the skulls, thank you, Rose. I do too, they are gorgeous with the different colors. Super fantastic. So motifs, different designs, Keep this as a template. You can trade it out if you want. Remember to put everything in the right order. So Susie says, I need to watch the replay. Time to wash and cut the dog. Oh, don't cut your dog. <laughs> cut his hair. <laughs> Thanks, Sue, for kicking off our week with great projects. It looks doable. Thank you, Sue. All right, Jackie Cheek. That's awesome. I'd like to see what you guys come up with. Make your own simple. Keep it simple for the first time. Stitch it out and post it in the OML Embroidery University Facebook group. And you can be a success. I may stitch this one out tomorrow because I really honestly love these skulls. And it's so nice that they are um, working files. I love it. So if you have questions, head on over to our group and ask. If you get lost in the numbers and the orders, just think about, close your eyes, take a deep breath and think about when you're stitching it and you will come up with it. So there you go is um, it's easy. <laughs> and it's fun and it's not perfect, but it'll sure turn out nice. So that is our first in the series of templates that we are going to make to make our lives easier and a whole lot more fun. And I'm going to keep working on this Battenberg lace. Um, this is my own design here that I did. This will be on... Um, water soluble stabilizer so i've done some it's on the oml embroidery universe or sorry the oml embroidery.com why am i having such a hard time saying that um website where i did a whole bunch of lace stuff and i got really complicated um yes replay is always available i always appreciate the replay crew it counts as much as anything so make sure you guys like and share, please. We got to kick it up a notch and happy designing. And yes, I'll send a picture of it to Karina. I know she loves skulls. Donna says, I'll have to watch this again to get this down. I tried repeating the steps a whole bunch of times. So hopefully that'll make it easier. Bye, OML gang. Thanks, Sue, for info today. You're welcome, Barbara. So... Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys will make a mug rug just for you. Keep it simple. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everyone.